Welcome to Hollywood Theater. Once again, we take great pleasure in bringing to you another in our series of original television productions from Hollywood. People, New York City is a set of figures. 365 square miles, 8 million people, $7 billion worth of land. To others, it's a wonderful place to visit. Sightseeing, theaters, nightclubs. To me, it was the dream job I'd find there someday. Not that I was a green kid from the sticks on that October morning, but I still had my dream, and I was sure that this was the day. Miss Fenner had phoned to say that I should hurry right down to the employment office. And Miss Fenner had never been one to hold out false hopes. You're late, Miss Jordan. I'm sorry, but everything went wrong. My landlady didn't give me your message until I came down to breakfast. And this is my only decent suit, and it was all wrinkled. And, and one of the girls borrowed my iron without even asking. And I missed an express by inches. And, Oh, when you're in a rush, everything goes wrong. I know. I know. You didn't send out anyone else. No. The rest of the girls have all gone out on other jobs. Oh, good. But before we talk about the one I sent for you for, let's get something straight, Ada. There aren't any of those dream jobs you keep talking about. Oh, but there are, Miss Fenner. Lots of girls have told me about jobs with, with good pay and, and easy hours and and bosses who take you out to dinner when you've been working late and, and send you home in taxis and call you by your first name and, and want you to call them by their first name. And propose to you at the end of the first week. Hmm. No, Ada. It doesn't happen that way. Now, just look at your own record. Eight jobs in one year. No, really. That's disgraceful. You know, I couldn't have been more surprised if Mr. Feeling selected you from the many girls in my files who have excellent records. Please, make the most of this opportunity, my dear. Mr. Fielding. That's a nice name. Yes. Mr. Cooper Fielding. He'll be here in less than an hour to interview you. And I advise you to accept his offer, even if it doesn't sound like your dream job. Don't forget, dreams can sometimes turn into nightmares. You mustn't mind the card, Mr. Fielding. That's right, Mr. Fielding. Statistics don't always give the real picture. They never do. I think we can learn a good deal more about each other by just talking for a while, don't you, Miss Jordan? Well, then you won't need me here while you're talking. I'll go into my other office and catch up on my correspondence. The only reason I've changed jobs so often is that I think a girl ought to keep looking until she finds the job she's right for and that's right for her. I quite agree with you. And I hope that I'll be able to make this one right for you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Oh, but you should... Go on. <laughs> Please. Thanks. What business are you in? Well, I'm a... I'm a writer. Oh. What's wrong? Well, I, I might as well be honest. My shorthand's a little rusty. Then we'll get a dictaphone so you won't have to worry about your shorthand. As a matter of fact, you're the one who's going to have to be patient. You see, I... Uh, I haven't actually written anything yet. But I've always wanted to write, and this is the first chance I've ever had. I probably won't write very much at first, so you'll have pretty easy hours. Oh, I'm not afraid of work. Of course you're not, but uh, you won't mind if we knock off a couple of afternoons and take in a ball game, will you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now for the all-important question. How much money do you think I ought to pay you? Oh. Well, I've, uh, I've been sort of averaging $50 a week. Well, then we'll make it 60 to start with, Miss... Uh, look, I, I refuse to go on calling you Miss Jordan. Do you mind if I call you Ada? No, of course not. It's a deal. And you call me Cooper. I don't like formality. I don't either. Oh, I'm gonna like working for you, Mr. Field. Cooper. Good. Then it's all settled. I haven't got an office yet. You can help me pick one out. One that you'll like. Oh, I'm sure anything you'd pick would be satisfactory. After all, I'm only... But if you aren't happy in your surroundings, Ada, then the job's no good. After all, I feel very lucky at having found you. I've looked all over New York for a girl like you. But you haven't asked me a single question about myself. How can you be sure? Perhaps it's because you remind me of my sister. Oh, do I remind you of it? Oh, 
<laughs> For a moment, I thought you were serious. I'm always serious. Now, what do we do about Miss Fenner? How do I go about paying her for finding me a good secretary? Oh, I pay her out of my first week's salary. Let me take care of that, Ada. Then we'll grab a taxi, and I'll take you home. Oh, wonderful. Oh, look, about tomorrow morning, I'd like you to meet me in the coffee shop in my hotel about 10 o'clock. Uh, then we can get an early start looking for the office. Oh, uh, is 10 o'clock too early? Oh, goodness, I'm not even going to sleep tonight. I'm just going to go right on dreaming. You're not just saying that to please me. You really do like modernistic furniture for an office? If you like it. Only one thing, not too much chrome. It blinds me. <laughs> do you know why I like modern? Because all my life, I've lived with old furniture. Oh, so have I. And that house in the South that I live in is just filled with junk from the year one. <laughs> well, antiques. There's a lot of difference between antiques and just plain old furniture. Well, first to find the office and then to select the furniture. You pick out anything you want. I'll even go for flower chintz if it'll make you happy. <laughs> Mr. Fielding, Mr. Cooper Fielding, paging Mr. Cooper Fielding. Here, son. Oh, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Pardon me. Oh. Bad news? Mm. It's about my Aunt Martha. She's my great aunt, really. She and I lived together in that old house I mentioned. Yes? She's pretty sick. Guess I'll have to go home. Do you mean for good? Yep. Does your going home mean you have to give up all hope of writing? No, I guess I can write down there just as well as I can here. Mm -hmm. But I sort of figured it would go easier in new surroundings. Probably a silly idea. I guess I can write at home. If you do, you'll still need a secretary. Yes, I guess I will. I'm sorry it couldn't be you, Ada, but I'll make things right for you. I'll pay you two weeks' salary and I'll... Couldn't I go with you and be your secretary there? I could get a room somewhere near where you live. Oh, the house is big enough, but... You don't know how much this means to me. This is the kind of job I've always dreamed of. Wouldn't work out, Ada. Why not? Why not? Well, take me. Aunt Martha's the only family I've got. I've tried to shrug off my responsibility to her, but it can't be done. Could you walk out on your family, Ada? Do you think I'd be living in a cheap rooming house in New York if I had a family? No family? Any place? Oh, but Ada, a little southern town can become pretty dull. It wouldn't be long before you'd miss New York and all your boyfriends. There isn't anyone who matters. It hasn't been for a long time. But you must have a lot of girlfriends who'd miss you. There isn't one who'd give a darn if the earth opened up tomorrow and swallowed me. Well, I must say, you're making it very difficult for me to... Mr. Fielding, Cooper, you mustn't feel responsible. If for any reason things don't work out, it won't be your fault. I'm beginning to think that things will work out. We caught the afternoon train, a deluxe streamliner, a compartment all to myself, cocktails in the club car, wonderful meals in the diner, of course, my friends would never have understood my going on a trip with a stranger. And I didn't want to tell them that I was off on another dream job because there was always a chance that it might not work out. Cooper thought of the perfect explanation. I was going to visit relatives and I might not even be back. like everyone in town's asleep. Oh, Ham will be around someplace. He has to be. He's porter, ticket agent, and baggage clerk, and everything else. Oh, oh here he is. Hi, Ham. Hi, Mr. Fielding. I'll get that baggage up to your house. Don't you worry about it. Thanks, Ham. Be about a half hour, though, after I've delivered this sack of mail to the post office. Oh, that's all right. Come on, Ada. Aunt Martha will be waiting for us. Sure happy to see you found her, Mr. Fielding. What does he mean by that? I don't know. Oh, yes, he's been married four times. Maybe he thinks I finally found a wife. <laughs> Glad to see you home, sir. Thanks, Rachel. Do you like it? I've never seen an old southern mansion before. Oh, it's so large. <laughs> we never use the upper floors anymore. As a matter of fact, we have a tower room with a beautiful view overlooking the ocean. <laughs> Sounds lovely. I'll take you up there sometime. 
I just know I'm going to love it here. Oh, before we go out there, there's something I want to tell you. Yes? It's about Aunt Martha. She's old and lame and sort of peculiar. And lately, her whole life has been wrapped up in the hope that my sister Bernice will be home one of these days. Your sister? Oh, yes, you said once that I remember. We have you. no idea of where Bernice is. You see, well, this isn't easy for me to say, but Bernice was very strange as a child. You mean really strange, mentally? Yes. Dad thought she ought to be placed in an institution, but Mother always fought against it. Finally, when Bernice was five years old, Mother took her from her room one night and ran away. How terrible. We never saw either of them after that. We got word many years later that Mother had passed away, but we never could find Bernice. But why are you telling me all this now? Because it's become a mania with Aunt Martha. She believes that every woman who walks in is Bernice. I wanted to prepare you. Oh, I understand, Cooper. I won't say anything to hurt her. Thanks, Ada. Come on. Who is that, Rachel? It's I, Aunt Martha. Cooper and... Come close to me, my child. Me? Come on, child. I only want to look at you. Sit down, dear. Sit down. Thank you. Well, you look a little tired. Perhaps the long trip was too much for you. Oh, no. But how are you feeling? I haven't felt so well in years. But I thought, what is Cooper said? I've been very worried about you, Aunt Martha. No need to worry now. It's like a tonic having Bernice home again. Still the same lovely red gold in your hairs when you were a baby. Well, I've, I've changed a little. We won't ask you anything about the past, Denise. We'd just be happy to have you back at last. Well, it's good to be back. The house looks lovely. Oh, and we have your old room all ready for you. Of course, we had to remove the little bed and put in a large one. That's Aunt Martha for you. Thanks, Aunt Martha. And probably you're anxious to see it. Run right ahead, my dear. Forgive me if I don't go up with you. I seldom leave this old chair of mine. I'll show her to her room, Aunt uh, Martha. Cooper, you stay here. I want to talk to you. Oh, Rachel! Rachel will show you up, Bernice. She cleaned your room thoroughly yesterday, and I had her pick a bunch of flowers and put them on your dressing table this morning. This morning? What made you think I'd, I'd come home today? Why, well, I got Cooper's telegram. I told Cooper before he left, I wanted a telegram the moment he'd found Bernice. 